I want to talk about what I think is probably the most serious assault on civil liberties in Northern Ireland since internment without trial. And what we're seeing at the moment are people who disagree with Sir Keir Starmer on immigration being arrested and locked up for posts that they have made and things that they put on social media. And again, I think when we look at what's happened last week with, with D. Stitt, and again, I'm not a legal expert, I'm not going to pretend to be a legal expert, but all the stuff that's out there in the public domain would lead anyone with a just a modicum of common sense to turn around and say, this is completely unjust. A man be remanded in custody for forwarding on a Facebook post that someone forwarded, forwarded to him. And you wonder how many other people that have been arrested that, that forward this, this, um, this post on. And I think we're in a situation now where this isn't just two-tier policing. This is political policing. This is a police state. And what we're actually seeing more and more are political prisoners. We think about the situation Tommy's in. And you'll see from the video he's the videos he's done. He he he's saying, "I know I'm going to go to prison if I return to the UK," and he's going to return to prison for making a film and, and publishing that film. And it's probably one of the most see, the most widely seen documentaries, certainly in British history. Forty million people, I think, plus have seen that have seen that film so far. And it's exactly the same as what's happening on a, on a smaller scale in the the community I live in in, in North Down, where you've got people seemingly all from the from the loyalist community who have very genuine and legitimate legitimate concerns about immigration and particularly illegal immigration into that into our area and have been voicing those concerns well actually for a year and a half and and I've been to I think 90% of the peaceful legal demonstrations outside the local hotel that's housing illegal migrants. And let's get it right. The people that are being housed in these hotels are not being housed in the, those hotels because they are genuine bona fide asylum seekers. They're coming, they're, they're in those hotels because nobody knows who they are. Because most of them have ditched their passports. Most of them are not telling exactly where they're from or why they're here. And there is absolutely no way of vetting these people properly. Of course, the, the Home Office would, would dispute that. So I think it's quite justified for our community to stand outside that hotel every Friday and voice our concerns. And I would encourage anyone. I don't normally make videos about what's going on in my, my local area. As any watch my videos, you know, I, I, I treat the UK as a whole and I don't try and just focus on, on, on local issues. But this is a local issue in our area that's causing people a lot of, a lot of alarm, a lot of concern. People are concerned about who the people are in the Marine Court. And again, there's been a lot of rumours. And again, we can't. there's no point in, in just quoting rumours because we don't know anything for sure. But there's been a lot of rumours about things that have gone on with people from that hotel. And of course, there have been court cases and we've seen the court cases. So for people to be imprisoned, for people to be demonised, we had it with Farry when he was the local MP. He called us racist. Now, of course, Farry had absolutely no clout whatsoever. It's a bit different when the country's prime minister comes to Northern Ireland and condemns, I would say, probably 50 to 60 percent of the Northern Irish population. Most people won't voice these concerns publicly because a lot of people work in the public sector. A lot of people work in jobs where if their employers find out, they might get into trouble. So there's a there's a there's a silence. There's a there's a there's a silent majority. And we know from polls that anywhere up to 70 percent of people in the UK are not happy with migration they're not happy with illegal migration it's, it's probably higher with illegal migration and i think up to 95 percent of people are not happy with multiculturalism so what we're saying is not minority it's not racist it's not xenophobic it's out of concern for our communities and love for our communities and that's why people are taking a stand and d stitt is in prison because he forwarded on a post that was suggesting people take a stand. He wasn't suggesting people break, break the law, as far as I could see. There was none of that in that post. It was just taking a stand. And the judge seemed to single out one phrase from that 
post where it said it talked about Islam being evil. Now, as far as I was aware, it wasn't illegal to call any religion evil in the United Kingdom or in Northern Ireland. So the question's got to be asked, why has he been remanded in custody? And to me, these people that have been arrested, and again, this is my opinion, and my opinion doesn't count, obviously, but my opinion is that these people are political prisoners. And I think what needs to happen is there needs to be a movement, a legitimate, legal, peaceful movement started to protest about the misuse of the judiciary, to protest about people being arbitrarily arrested, charged and remanded for exercising their freedom of speech. And I really do think that people need to come together and work out how we do something about this. Again, I'm talking, I'm talking totally legally, totally peacefully. But this is the sort of issue that everybody that believes in freedom, everybody that believes in the United Kingdom, everybody that believes in democracy should be on board with. Because if, if legitimate concerns that actually are mainstream among the British public are now being punished by prison sentences or by people being remanded in custody, then democracy is dying. And we need to do everything within our power to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if that means peacefully and legally taking to the streets in big numbers, I think that is a legitimate thing to do. And that should happen on down the country. It should happen relating to what's happening in Northern Ireland with, with people being remanded and, and people being arrested and their homes ransacked. It happened to a, another friend of mine. Uh, Clifford Peoples was, was arrested. His house was absolutely trashed. And they held him for 48 hours and, and then released him without charge. But it's the it's it's like Tommy always says, the process is the punishment. It's lawfare. And of course, Sir Keir Starmer is an expert in lawfare, as we all know. So that's just my my opinion on what's happening, certainly in my neck of the woods in Northern Ireland. And uh I came here in the nineteen eighties as a as a young soldier. Met my wife, got married, and I've been here ever since. Trying to do my best to to stand for what's right in as many in, in every situation that I find myself in. And a lot of people are saying, "Don't make videos, don't do this. You're going to get in trouble. You're going to get arrested." Well, if I get arrested for speaking the truth and for calling for peaceful protest and for calling out power being unjustly wielded and used against. A community that is downtrodden and that has that really feels that the 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 UK government's had its had its knee on its neck for a long long time. I'm talking about the British working class there, by the way, whether in Northern Ireland, whether in Belfast, whether in Brighton, whether in Blackpool, whether in Bournemouth, or whether in Bermondsey, the British working class have had enough of the oppression and and the the contempt that we're treated with by the ruling elite. Um, and I've said a lot about that in the past as well. But anyway, that's that's my feelings. Um, I think, again, I'm nobody. I don't have any influence. I'm not I'm not trying to, to tell people what to do, but that's what I believe would be an effective thing to do is, is to actually say, we're going to start protesting to get these political prisoners out. And that would include Tommy Robinson when his trial comes up. I think it's a movement that's definitely, definitely worth worth getting our shoulder behind and and putting our best foot forward with. So that's it, guys. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If I disappear, then you know that the stars here have come for me. And I think I'll maybe pre-record a video and, and get it uploaded somewhere by a third party. But the way things are at the minute, just making videos like this, which should never even come into the radar of, of, of the police, could well be scrutinised and could well land us in trouble. And I think that's a very, very dangerous situation that we that we find ourselves in. And I think we need to we need to really call to account the people that have done this. And again, it's a long game. We've got five years to get this right. And I'll, I'll do another video on that in a minute. But we've got to do this right. Anyway, like and subscribe. Give me your email address. I am the, the email um, the link to 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 the subscribe. Um, page on my websites there subscribe to the channel subscribe to my twitter account because we've got to build up a, a massive profile 
to protect ourselves and to actually let you guys know what's happening because they are coming after us and they are trying to silence us. I'll see you all soon.